What's going on guys? Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone that's bought a course, bought training, and once again, thank you to the Nerd Tribe for your well-constructed comments. Today's video is gonna be about the stock market has had an average return of 10% or more for the last 100 years is a damn lie. Because, you know, I've heard people say this before and I never really investigated it, but I went to the Google machine and it was like, we had this thing called the Great Depression that the majority of stock channels act like this thing has never happened and stocks are gonna continue to go up and up and up and up and up and up. And after a small downturn, it's gonna be a record bull market. And I began to think the majority of the people on YouTube have not lived long enough to go through a bad market. They're in their 20s or early 30s, and the market has been nothing but upside for them their whole time they were in the market. Now, Joseph Hoag, uh, the guy, Bowtie Nation, he's one of the only channels to put out guidance about not buying on the dip. Joseph is in his 40s, he's an older guy, very interesting that someone with a little wisdom is going contrary to stocks are on sale, crypto's on sale. You need to go ahead and get you some. Dollar cost average in. I personally believe this is the beginning of the second Great Depression. I don't think it's gonna last this long. And if you, dollar cost average into stocks and never sell and hold on for 10 years, you should be okay. But in the short term, it's gonna be the same as taking a dollar bill, flicking a lighter and lighting that dollar bill on fire. So I did a little research and I went to the Google machine and there was some uh, differences between the guidance because Technically, the Great Depression was from 1929 to 1939, a 10-year economic span of time where things were just down. Unemployment in America was 25%. And then it, it kind of differs. Did the Great Depression end in 1939 or did the Great Depression end in 1941? Because there's some additional research about the impact of World War II on the Great Depression. And I found a very interesting article that was talking about, it wasn't the uptick in production and spend, it was the new habits that Americans had adopted because during World War II, we had rationing, People had coupons to get sugar and milk. So the country at a wholesale level was used to living on less than, which is one of the greatest economic principles to get rich, to live on less than. So it was, this article talked about the changing mores, the changing habits and these new habits that were developed during World War II which officially ended the Great Depression. Now, you can listen to who you want to, you can be a fanboy, but I don't think that this is going to be a quick, fast, easy situation. Because one of the things I've done, I have bought myself $1,000 worth of Apple stock, which has not returned to the price in which I bought it. And I bought a dividend ETF, SCHD, which surprisingly today went up $1.63 per share. So I am actually have some exposure to the market and these are, to my, these are my canaries in the mine. 
this is something, you know, because interestingly enough, from business acumen, it doesn't matter what the marketplace at a wholesale level is doing. If you're smart enough, you're willing to do your research, you're willing to work hard, you can always find a deal. So I went ahead when I was doing my research and I was like, what stocks are doing well? Surprisingly enough, energy stocks are booming at the moment. Now that makes sense. Things that people need are going to do well in this recession depression. Th things that people need because gas, OPEC just reduced the number of all barrels of oil they were putting out, which raises the price of gas. So energy. So if you want to dabble in the stock market, you got to think, what do people need? Utilities, energy, gas, food, anything that's in those arenas where people absolutely have to have it. AKA to me, gas is recession proof. Oil is recession proof. Natural gas is recession proof. Chicken is recession proof. Fruits and vegetables are recession proof because whether there's a recession or not, people still consume these staples. So I do feel that if you are a skilled, savvy investor, you can make money in this market. It's out there. But if you're just going to stick your head in the sand and like, I'm going to dollar cost average into these stocks willy nilly without any consideration, forethought or research, I think you're going to lose your ass. I, that, that's my opinion because I've seen a lot of people pushing and I'm not going to mention any names, but I want you guys to bookmark this because I have a feeling I'm going to get to talk about this going forward. But there's someone on YouTube, it's a pretty large following, a very big advocate in stocks. And I feel that he's about to lose a lot of money because he spent a lot of money on one single stock that I feel is going to suffer a decline. Because this is why I say this. With my course, the money course, where did that come from? I've been in business 24 years, 23, 24 years. You have business, you know, business goes like this. It goes like this. It's not like straight, straight up. It's, it's like this. And this is one of the reasons that I've developed the spending habits I have on the personal side. Uh, typically, if I have an amazing year, I know from practical experience that, hey, that's good. But we need to be a good steward of that money because the next year may not be like that. And 2003 was the best year ever for me. And then uh, 2020, then 2021, I didn't make, I made like half the amount of money. And then in 2022, about on par to do what I did in 2021. So I know that this belief that things are going to be consistently rosy and there's gonna be an upward trend is just bad juju. So I feel, once again, the Great Depression was 80, 82, 83 years ago. So the stock market has not provided a 10% return for 100 years. That is a lie. That is, that is bad information. And I feel because things go in cycles, I feel that we're due for a prolonged downturn in the market. Now, once again, if you know how to do options, because hold on, I don't know if this is going to focus, but probably not, probably not going to focus, but essentially this is Dear Glendon Cameron, thank you for applying for options trading privileges in your account. We reviewed your request and we're happy to let you know that 
we have approved your account for writing uncovered calls and puts, creating spreads, purchasing calls and puts, writing covered calls, and trade cash security puts. These approvals are based on your investigative objective, risk tolerance, experience, and other information you provided on your application. You can verify this information by logging to your accounts at TD Ameritrade. And so I, I've set up my TD Ameritrade because uh, you should. It's not gonna focus on that. But this is TD, this is a letter from that I got today from TD Ameritrade. And um, going forward, I'm going to do some options trading. Now, once again, let me provide the framework. I am not going to put a lot of money in options until I actually know what I'm doing. The other day when I bought SCHD, I had to look in there because it was like, was it a limit order or was it a market order? And honestly, I didn't even know what that meant. And I had to go to the Google machine to figure out what that was. And then I placed my market order. So the next November, December, I'm going to be dipping my toe in the options waters. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to expose a lot of money, but I'm going to learn because I, my TD Ameritrade is set up for that. Uh, my Schwab account, because this is what I was going to do. Uh, I'm probably going to use either my Schwab account or my Cobra account for day trading activities. And I'm probably going to use my TD Ameritrade account for options trading in swing trades. Because I feel that if you have the experience, even if the market is down for the next 10 years, if you know what you're doing, you can make money because that's how the stock market has been designed. It has been set up for you to make money if it's up and for you to make money if it's down and it's for you to make money in the middle. Once again, um, if I was a, once again, going to this guy who put a lot of money into this one stock, I didn't hear any guidance to putting a lot of money into energy stocks which at the moment is a pretty safe bet. At no point people are gonna stop buying gas and natural gas. And so that's some money that you can dollar cost average into and not lose your shirt. I just gave you some game from a guy who is just, who's in the introductory level of the market. I'm in the introductory level and I was already able to figure that out and I have not seen now not to say that there are not stock channels that talk about this because I don't watch them all but from the stock channels I've been watching I've not seen that kind of guidance that you should be dollar cost averaging into in my opinion safe haven assets energy sector um, maybe the food sector maybe the agriculture sector I haven't researched that but Right now, if I was a stock market guy, I would be piling my money into safe haven assets versus like, I feel that the tech sector is going to be decimated. And I'm going to tell you this, why? 63% of the FANG companies are not generating a profit. Now, when you have a company that has all of these investment dollars and that's what's keeping it alive. What's gonna happen when we get into a period where these investors cannot keep putting that money into these zombie companies? DoorDash is a zombie company. Uber is a zombie company. These are companies that are not making profits. So how long can you play that game right now? Kathy Woods of ARK Investment is losing her mind. She's writing open letters because monetary policy is dictating the direction that the market's going in. And they're not printing any more money. They're quantitative, not, not quantitative easing. I forget when they take money out the economy. That's what's going on and it's hammering stocks. And 
if what I think is going to happen that this uh, taking money out the economy keeps up, the stock market is going to keep crashing because the stock market needs quantitative easing to keep booming. And if you're not looking at the monetary policy, because let's go ahead and look at the monetary policy for the last 12 years, cheap money, um, quantitative easing, the CARES Act, we just saw copious amounts of money come into the economy from the government, either from printing of money or direct payments or enhanced unemployment. So we have seen a lot of money come into the economy from the government. And we're gonna see the economy be like a zombie economy to some degree because the American economy is huge. Uh, it's really huge, there's a lot of money into it. And even if we were to go back to Great Depression economic levels, the economy will still be producing trillions of dollars, even if we went there. But that would be problematic because of the national debt and a, a lot of stuff. So what I fully, Intel laid off, I believe 20,000 workers. So in 2023, you're gonna see a lot of layoffs, a ton of layoffs. And this is what's going to bring in that missing component because I keep hearing people, it's like, we're not in a recession. We've had two quarters of negative growth. We've had an inverted yield curve. So other than the in high end unemployment, we've got the technical indicators of a recession. And I feel that it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Because I'm in Atlanta, and one of the things I'm doing is checking out home prices. Now, I used to live in Sandy Springs, and the home prices over there are reasonable. Three, four, five thousand dollars five per month for a four or five thousand square foot home in a nice neighborhood with great schools, low crime. But I am seeing a certain level of madness of people in the hood who have houses up for three and four thousand dollars a month? At four thousand dollars a month, that's forty-eight thousand dollars a year in rent. That's not something you can do on an average salary. And somebody who's making money like that is not going to want to live in the hood, in my opinion. I could be wrong. Could be someone coming up from New York, and it might be an upgrade for them. I don't know, but I'm going to keep my eye on that because. I don't think the real estate market at a wholesale level is gonna crash, but I do feel that the areas where real estate prices went bananas, you will see market sector, sector place crashes in those locales. You're, you know, if you're in Spudsville, Idaho, I don't even know if that's a real city, um, your, your real estate market is gonna be fine. But if you're in Miami or Atlanta, or Dallas or Austin, you could be experiencing a crash. And um, I feel that a lot of this stuff is gonna work itself out. But once again, you know, back to the main topic. I am not seeing a lot of wise advice on this, you know, keep, buy, you know, it's a real estate trapper says, buy on the dip and it gets dippier. Uh, like I said, I've got $2,000, you know, chump change in the market so I can gauge because I wake up and I look and see what's going on and I'm really interested in learning how to do options trading at the moment I don't know how to do it and I'm not going to spend like a crazy amount of time because uh, I've got some other stuff that I'm going to do but I'm probably going to spend an hour maybe two hours a day looking at that setting up some stuff and doing some research and I'm probably going to join an investment group locally where I can get feedback from non-YouTube people, from real people, because once again, um, you cannot trust YouTube people. You just simply, and as a YouTube YouTuber, I'm talking to, you know, I'm part of the group. You just can't trust YouTubers because YouTubers will lie to you in a heartbeat to get views. 
So I am going to find me a network or a group of people who are trading to talk to, to learn from, to fellowship with on my trading journey. Because like I said, I don't care how bad the market gets, if you have the right skill sets, whether the market's up or down, you can still make money in these markets. But the average person, I don't think, has the skill sets because you could have been a blind bamboo and made money the last 12 years in these markets. Now, we're gonna see who are the real savvy, who has savvy investment chops, the real market players, because a lot of these fake, um, perpetrated market people, I, I, I think it's about to get real quiet on their channels or they're gonna find some new hustle because I am seeing like, once again, if you're looking at somebody who's relatively young and they're talking about keep dollar cost averaging in there and, the, and realize that these people have never went through a really bad market. They don't know what they expect. They don't know how to handle that. So once again, Joseph Hogue, he has an investment, you know, Joseph Hogue, he has a, a, a stock channel and this guy has gone on record and put out a video talking about not buying on the dip and what you should be doing, you should be saving money, which I agree with, and you should be putting it in your brokerage account and waiting for future opportunities. Because the stock market doesn't move at the speed of light. So, you know, you may not get at the bottom, but you can buy when it's coming on its way up. Then once again, this is something that I will have to learn. I will have to learn, but I'm going to start investigating options and day trading. Like I said, I'm probably gonna use my Cobra account for day trade. And this is what's funny. TD Ameritrade was the easiest, it was the hardest to set up, but it's the easiest to get money in and money out. Cause that was one of my questions. Cobra, you gotta wire money in and they're working on getting some stuff where you can get money out. And Schwab, you can put money in and take it out now. But TD Ameritrade is the easiest one to get money in and to get money out of. So once again, you can keep buying on the dip and once, you know, if you're gonna buy and hold on 10, 15 years, you'll probably be okay. But I, I don't know if you can mentally look, if you buy on the dip for the next year and it keeps dipping and it keeps dipping and it keeps dipping. That's, that's a form of self torture that I don't think most people can sustain. I don't know. But once again, I'm getting ready to do some new training. If you buy the program, it's gonna be in the first comment. You're gonna get it because I'm getting ready to emerge from my break. This is the first time I've done two videos in one day. And what I wanna do, and it's gonna take me some time to get this set up, I wanna release a video at six in the morning and then one at six in the evening. That's what I'm shooting for. And um, we should do that next week. That should be in effect next week. If you notice, the topics have changed a little bit. I'm not dueling with the moist men and it's good. Life is good. But once again, I've just did some cursory research. And if you're listening to someone who's telling you that the stock market has a 10% return for the last hundred years, I would be very careful of listening to this person's advice because they haven't done even the most basic research. It didn't happen.